Hi everyone and welcome to another video for Agricultural Engineering 213. So this far in this module we've been looking at uh, drainage and why we have drainage, water logging and then BRAC soils, accumulation of salts and the effect that that has on the plant. So while we're still busy with that, we're now going to look at planning your drainage system. So we're looking at what steps do you take and how do you start uh, if you want to plan your draining system and know what kind of system to implement and how far you have to space your drains apart underneath uh, the soil in order to drain any excess water that's stuck in your underground soil. So when we do a desk study, before we, we start uh, implementing our plans, we firstly need to order uh, aerial photos. So what that means is um, photos that's maybe been taken on, on Google Maps or something similar to that. And so with those photos, you'll start looking at your soil, you'll start looking at the landscape and the topography of the soil. And you'll start looking at, at stuff like um, possible causes of, of irrigation problems or drainage problems. So you'll look at areas in the soil landscape where you maybe have a slope or you have a a hole in the landscape where water can accumulate so you start looking at all of that kind of uh, things that can maybe be an indication of where you'd expect your planning uh, to start for for drainage or where do you think you'll have your biggest problem and um, in that photos you'll also see existing water courses so what are the pathways that you can use when you are taking a photo from the top and you look at the landscape, you're trying to look for pathways where you can plan your drainage pipe along to make sure that the water flows along that drainage line as it should be. Um, and so there are a couple of things when you're looking at the topography. So you're looking at your landscape that, uh, that you can use these aerial photos for. So, uh, these photos, they show natural draining patterns. So that's patterns where uh, you'll maybe see the water flowing into. Determine the slope, which is important because water only flows downhill due to gravitation. So it's always important to know what the slope is of your land that you want to drain. Shape and length of water courses. So where the water usually flows. Determine the position of profile holes. So... Um, these profile holes are holes that you dig in your land and um, with the, the digging of that hole you'll take a sample out of the soil and usually you'll go into that area where you've dug the hole and you will look at the kind of soils and you'll try to see what the, the underlying um, soil conditions is when you are looking at where you want to plant your, your drain or why there might be a... Um, a problem in a specific area so you'll try to find areas where you want to dig those profile holes to understand the uh, soil a bit better indicate depths and dumping points and then indicate other infrastructures so that's maybe like um, what you've planted or, or a wall that you've built or something like like that something that is in the field that you can't move um, maybe big rocks and you want to know where can you uh, not plant those drainage pipes that you want to install. So a soil survey is done, as I said, with these profile holes. And um, it's very important because you need to understand how deep your, your fertile and your permeable part of your soil is so that you can uh, know what kind of uh, crops to plant. Then the depth of the impermeable layer so you want to understand where can you, uh, where do you have to maybe plow or where will the water accumulate because of that impermeable layer. Uh, you want to know the permeability color texture of your profile layers. Then the depth of the water table is important because that will also give you an indication of how deep you need to plant your um, drainage pipes, level of brackishness and source and movement of underground water. So you want to know um, where does it move and where is it coming from. And these profile holes, 
So they can be planted anything from um, in a cube, uh, 150 meters apart. So that's for uniform soil, like maybe areas like the Free State where the soil is similar for big areas, you'll have it 150 meters apart. Otherwise, you can look at for areas like the Boerland where the soil is constantly changing and there's also constantly changes in the, the height above sea level. So there's big changes in topography. You will have it 50 meters apart and your hole is usually 1.8 meters deep. Um, that's also because your, your roots usually only go that deep and then inspection immediately after digging. And this is because... Um, if you're going to let it stand for maybe one or two days, uh, the soil color will change especially, and you'll also um, just have oxidation and stuff like that occurring in your bottom soil. So it's important to inspect your soil immediately after the hole has been dug. So design factors that are important. Um, you need to know the quantity of water that you have to drain the topography, soil characteristics, and the crop requirements. So now we're going to look at different types of drains that you can install and what the use and advantages and disadvantages of these different types of drains are. So firstly is the local drain. Now if you look at this picture on the side, you can see clearly you've got a main drain line and then you've got these drains at the side. And so a local drain, which is this kind of drain type, it is when there's a drain just in specific areas and the rest of the field, there aren't any um, drainage pipes. So this is when you know that there's a small part or a patch in your field that there's always a problem with draining. There's always too much water in that part. Then you'll install a local drain only in that part and not throughout the whole field. And um, the advantages is cheap because you, um, you only need to have one drainage pipe the disadvantage is it's hard to remove because uh, you usually don't exactly remember where you planted it and uh, especially if you've planted you know big crops over or orchards over that drain then you have to remove the orchard before you can actually remove that local drain next is a cutoff drain and it's used to cut off water from higher ground so in this sketch here on the on the right hand side you can see there's a slope and then there's a flat piece of soil at the bottom and we know that water will always accumulate at this part because it's running down from the slope and therefore you will have waterlogged conditions at the bottom of your slope and installing a drainage pipe over there right under that soil surface is called a cutoff drain and it will help you to uh, remove all of the water that's accumulating at the bottom of a slope so the advantages are it's cheap for the same reason as the local drain is cheap because now you only need to install one drainage pipe and the disadvantages is it has to be on an impermeable layer so to explain that this is a permeable layer so this is sand kind of soil and this is a clay kind of soil underneath so the water always moves over that um impermeable layer inside the permeable layer as it moves down the slope and to the bottom and you need that drain pipe just on top of your impermeable layer because if it's too high the water will just sit underneath that drainage pipe and you will still have problems with um, with drainage so to to be able to effectively use a cut of drain it has to be on top of an impermeable layer then you will have your fishbone it's full area coverage um, and a fishbone is very useful because you are installing drainage pipes in a big area so you'll be you know implementing it on both sides of your sub uh, and main line and you'll install these lateral pipes everywhere along your your line so there's a lot of drainage pipes that you are installing and it's along that main line. So it's covering a whole area. And as you can see, it moves along the curves of the slope of the field. So um, the advantages are it provides good coverage of a whole field. The disadvantages 
these the lateral drones are impractical when poorly planned. And it's also important to remember that um, your drainage line should always be perpendicular to the direction in which the water is moving. So when you are installing a fishbone uh, drainage system, it's very important to plan well beforehand how you are going to install the different kind of um, drains or lateral drains on the side. Um, and this is just a, a sketch to show why you need to you know, have your drains a certain depth. Then grit drains, uh, this is a very common one. It's if you've got a whole field that is maybe at a similar angle and you want to have drainage throughout that whole field then what you'll do is you'll literally just put a grid on top of um, your whole field and that will cover the whole area so your main drain is not dictated by topography and it's literally a grid with branch drains that are perpendicular to the main line and it's very effective because you are covering the whole area with this one grid and then finally the pump system so the pump system is only used when you don't have the advantage of um, draining the water to an area that's lying lower in the field so you always want to drain the water to an area that's downhill so that the water can move easily due to gravity downhill towards that area but sometimes you're in a field where there's drainage problems and you don't have the um, you don't have the angle and it's not really possible for you to use gravity to transport the water downwards so then you'll have a pump system and you will then use any of the other four previous ones and you'll just add a pump to that kind of system and what it does it it gives you the ability to transport water uphill so the disadvantages is that it's very expensive because now you have to install a pump and it's vulnerable to power failures and um, so to start again as in the beginning if you are planning drainage so just if you want to start with the project identify the source of the problem decide which type of drain works best determine the soil depth and permeability uh, examine the direction of flow of the underground water so that's important especially for your fishbone uh, drain system identify the position of the main drain and then consider all factors for future expansion and then keep access pits out of the way of implements so those access pits are just um, to make sure that as for something specifically like a grid grain you'll always have your uh, your if i can this you always have your access pits maybe over here in a straight line so you know exactly where it is Whereas something like a fishbone, you maybe have one over there and then one over there. So um, sometimes your access pits, you know, you, you're not sure where they are and that can lead to damage to uh, your access pit or one of your implements.